Crappie can be one of the most easiest and by far most delicious fish that you can catch on your home body of a lake. But being in the right location, using the right rod setup, and using the best lures on the market can really, really make or break whether you're going to load your boat full of big old slabs. So in today's video, I'm going to be focusing on, if I was just now starting, the key areas that I would be fishing, the key techniques, the key line and rod setup, and the key colors and baits that I would use if I was just now beginning. So I just, I want to take a little break from this video. I am making a lot of new little minnow kits. They are readily available for pre-order on the website. These are not going to last long guys. You know, this kind of relevant for this video. This kit's gonna come with everything you need to get out there and catch a slab. It's gonna come with 70 of my best colors, including a new color I like to call gummy bear, which is a teal, teal, greenish, bluish, looking like a snack color. And these are on the website now, crappymanjigs.com. Go grab you a box, support a small business, help feed my family. Uh, these are going to go out January 1st. They, these, these kids never last long. So head on to the website before you finish this video. Grab you a box. Uh, get out there and catch you some slabs. I hope everyone had an amazing holidays. This video should go out on Christmas. So Merry Christmas to everybody. So in today's video, we're going to take a step back. You know, I made a video a couple years ago called Beginner Crappy Course. And I kind of want to relate to that video, whereas I'm going to, you know, teach you guys key areas to look out for in your home body of water to hopefully get you on more fish. Now, the areas I'm going to talk about, you do not need sonar. You do not need a fancy boat or none of that. These areas on our, are almost on every single lake or river system or wherever you like to fish. The first big key factor to being able to catch more crappy 365 days of the year, because you can catch these fish all year long, is being in the right area. Now being in the right area, I do suggest using an, an app on your mobile device called Omna Fishing. Now what this is gonna do is gonna entitle you to be able to pull up a lake map of your home body of water and be able to have the depths and everything so you can actually look for these areas that I'm gonna cover. So in my opinion, when you're crappy fishing, there are three major structures. Now structure is important with crappy fishing because crappy like to hide or ambush prey because crappy in the, in itself is a predator you know a crappy eats you know little bluegill little crappy uh minnow shad crawfish all that but a crappy also gets ate by a largemouth bass a striper a catfish etc so it's a crappy's life is kind of like 70 30. You know, 70% of the time, it's looking to feed. 30% of the time, it's hiding, so it doesn't get ate. Now, that makes them a structure fish. Um, by structure, I mean something that they're able to feel safe. So, like a dock with dock pylons, they could get behind or up under the dock to feel safe from predators. A bridge... You know, they could get on the bridge pillars, any kind of structure from the bridge or old bridges and brush piles, lay downs, any kind of wooden structure that's in the lake. So those are my top three crappy, pretty much habitats, I guess you would say. We're going to cover each one. So when you're looking at your lake maps, one of the most obvious piece of structures that you can find when you're just now beginning crappy fishing is bridges. I mean, there's bridges pretty much on every body of water. You know, there are a certain few that don't have bridges. And if that's you, I'm sorry. But bridges are key. You know, you pull up your lake map, you find a bridge. In my opinion, you want a bridge that has at least 10 feet of water. You know, it, unless your body of water only has, you know, a certain amount of depth in it. 
I would go with 10 to 30 feet and find one of those bridges and go try it out. They're pretty much highways for these crappy. And what I mean by that, bridges normally, you know, go across certain key areas of a lake, like a bridge that goes across a river system. A bridge that goes across a creek you know the crappy push back into the creeks to spawn they've got to go through this bridge sometime of the year and then once they get done spawning they got to come back through that bridge and that's why normally bridges are good because it's kind of like a choke point you know you're going to have bait fish that's got to push through there and these crappy got to push through there to complete their life cycle and normally a lot of them hang around so you're going to have you know, fish that are post-spawn, pre-spawn, in the spawn, summertime, wintertime, they're going to be holding on that bridge. So if you can find a nice bridge, like I was saying, 10 to 30 feet of water is definitely worth checking out as a beginner. Now, the number two structure we're going to talk about is docks. Docks are my absolute favorite thing to fish. And just because, you know, you could do it so many different ways you can have a really high skill ceiling where you're shooting way up under docks in order to reach the biggest and baddest crappie on your lake or you know you can have a really toned down beginner where you're just making small repeated casts down docks until you get a bite either way it's absolutely fun to get out there and fish docks now, all docks aren't built the same. When you're looking for a dock on your home body of water, what I like to look for is a dock that's close to a river channel or a creek channel. If you get up on your map, like, like the Omni Efficient app, Navionics, and you follow your creek channels, your river channels, they're gonna make a bend. And I'm probably showing you an image of this right now but when you find a dock that's on one of these bends, I can guarantee you there will be fish on that dock probably 80% of the year. Because that bend, just like the bridges that we covered earlier, are highways for success. They're going to go down these creek channels, they're going to go down these river channels, and they're going to post up on this dock because it protects them from predators. It protects them from the sun. It heats up more in the winter. You know, it cools off more in the summer. Docks are amazing. Whether they're floating docks or docks with a lot of poles on them, just take your time, fish them thoroughly if you don't have electronics, and once you key in on a bite, I can guarantee you there's probably going to be more bites to follow. Third structure I would focus on are brush piles. But now if you're just beginning and you don't have electronics, brush piles can sort of mean lay downs. Now the best lay downs on the lake that you can find are looking for those creek channels again. But you're gonna be looking kind of more towards the back of your creeks, more towards, you know, your eddies and your, you know, water that's not running on a river system you're looking for those lay downs that are just a little bit deeper or a little bit different now if you do have uh, at least a 2d sonar or side scan or down imaging look for brush piles you know in the middle of creek channels uh, look for them off the beaten path on points uh, crappy do love points during you know, the summertime to fall transition, they also love points right there, right like in the middle of the spawn. It's a kind of a weird thing, but points, ch creek channels, river channels, definitely all of those play a big part in every single one of these key things. And the cool part is, guys, normally you can find all of these structures, all of this key stuff in the same area now i'm not saying that there's going to be a ton of crappy in every area on your lake but like i was saying crappy reproduce so much it's kind of hard not to find crappy if you follow the tips on this video this far in the video i really do appreciate you sticking around and watching i'm hoping i'm learning you something so next we're going to talk about rod and reel setups now if i'm not live scoping which is a kind of an advanced technique 
I'm using a shorter rod. I mean, if you watch any of my past videos, I have a shorter rod. I'm six foot four. This is a five four, no five six, a five six ACC crappy stick. And quite honestly, guys, you can go to your Walmart, whatever. They have ten to twenty dollar ultralight combos, and those work just fine when you're starting out. Now, as far as ACC crappy sticks goes, their five six is honestly the only rod they make that you feel anything. I'm just going to throw that out there. Hey, no, I ain't got nothing against ACC, but it's the only one that you can feel while you're winding. But they do make a really, really light rod if you like using a longer rod. But the way I like to pick my rods is I judge it on the tip. If that tip don't look like somebody with a bull whip, I don't want it. But you want to pick up a rod and try to feel it. And to make sure it's got you know good balance for you it's not too heavy if you're going to be fishing eight to ten hours a day you don't want to wear yourself out now you know a 10 foot jig rod is amazing if you would like to go that route an eight foot rod is fine even a seven foot rod is fine rod does not catch the fish you know certain techniques like slow rolling a jig the rod batters that's why I suggest a 5.6 ACC crappy stick because you can really, really feel good with it. Now the next big, big key thing with crappy fishing is your line. I run four pound of vicious line. When I'm casting, when I'm dock shooting, uh, when I'm just pitching a jig out there in the open water with live scope, I'm running four pound test vicious high vis line. Now, if I'm using a 10 to 14 foot pole, I'm using either straight 10 pound braid or I'm using six to eight pound test line, depending on what type of structure I'm fishing. But normally I run straight braid because I'll be live scoping and line size don't matter if you're staying above the fish. Now, one of the biggest key things with crappy vision is your presentation we're not talking about the jigs and stuff yet but presentation is one of the biggest things and i'm going to give you guys a cheat code i made a video you can after you watch this video write this down or whatever go look up my loop knot video you know it's a very very quick knot to tie you can tie it in around 15 to 20 seconds if that and what this does is if you're using a clinch knot or a palomar knot sometimes your knot gets on the front of the jig head and your jig head is going to be sitting in the water like this so a little cheat code is the loop knot with the loop knot it gives your jig free access and if you're using the jigs that i make at, here at crappy man jigs our jigs float so you have a weight on the front your plastic's going to float and with that loop knot it makes everything horizontal and everything looks natural so a loop knot is definitely something i would suggest you learn you can use a clinch knot you can use a palomar knot that's completely fine but every other cast you're going to have to fix your jig a loop, a loop knot eliminates all the hassle of that you tie a loop knot you throw it out there and confidently you know 100 percent of the time that your jig is horizontal you have the best chance to get a bite. Let's talk about jigs and jig colors. This is not a minnow fishing video. Minnows are a great tool. If you enjoy fishing minnows, by all means, go fish your minnows. But jigs are honestly, hands down, one of the funnest ways to catch a fish. And I'm gonna keep it real simple. You know, the kiss, myth, the kiss method for crappy fishing. Keep it simple, stupid. You need two colors, and that is Crappy Man Green and Monkey Milk. Now what these two colors are going to do, you're going to be ready for dingy water, you're going to be ready for muddy water, you're going to be ready for clear water, all with one color, and that is the Crappy Man Green. This color is extremely bright. and. If you like fishing in clear water, or if you're in really, really muddy water where they don't want to bite, 
I mean, monkey milk has caught millions upon millions of crappie throughout the generations of making it. Monkey milk is a shad, a minnow. It's an all around, just fantastic color. And that's all you need. This is all I fish with pretty much 365 days a year. Unless I'm switching it up, trying out new colors. But these are always tied on. I'm always going to have a crappy man green little minnow. Uh, a monkey milk swim bait. A crappy man green swim bait. Or, you know, if I'm fishing with my longer pole, I'm going to have just the bigger size and the same color. Uh, the, the cool part about all this is you can go to crappymanjigs.com. You can pick up jig heads, jigs, everything you need to get started. Now, let's talk about jig heads before we close this video out. I've got a couple videos about what jig heads matter, whatever. But to break it down, give you the easy button to slap on down. 164 and a 132. A 164, I know that sounds extremely small, and it is a small, small jig head. But when I tell you the slower that jig falls, you've got to have patience. Now, a, patient, a 164 is for a patient person. If you don't have patience, I, I, I don't know about going that route. But a 164 is going to let that jig just go down. You'll pitch it at the bridge. You'll pitch it at your brush pile. You'll pitch it at the dock. And that's all you do with a 164. You throw it down the dock and you wait for the bite. That jig and jig head is going to do all the work. They'll let you know if there's a fish there. If you're throwing a crappy man green jig and you don't get a bite after 10 casts, you know, change your depth, change whatever, but you need to move on to the next dock. It's that good, guys. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of testimonies. <laughs> but a 164 and a 132. I love a 164, but I also put a very, very tiny split shot on mine. So it's kind of like a 132. But I, I got better feel with split shot. But a 132 is kind of your everything jig head. If you're fishing windy conditions, you're fishing... Uh, slick calm a 132 will get the job done I suggest using a little minnow or a little stinker those are phenomenal beginner baits the jigs work for themselves you don't have to do any crazy techniques or anything it's kind of you cast out there you let the jig pen pendulum back to you and that's where you're going to get the majority of your bites <coughs> But yeah, guys, I really hope, you know, I gave you light on something. These are all my opinions. I have been crappy fishing for over 20 years. And I just kind of wanted to take a step back, break down what is crappy fishing and how to get out there and actually start catching fish today. You know, take a minute, get on your phone, get on your computer, whatever. Go out there and get on your units, on your boat. Figure out these deeper channel swings and go catch you some fish.